Check this out. What's going on guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops and today we are in Cedar Mountain, North Carolina. I just showed up to see this beautiful custom coupe we did a little over a year ago. I literally, this is the closest I've been yet, have even seen it, knocked on it, popped the hood, none of that yet. So I can't wait to get up there and show you guys this beautiful chicken coop. But you're gonna have to come along with me because I think I'm, I'm already a little excited about all the things that I'm seeing. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you guys are looking at is basically a replica of a very custom coupe we did down in Fairhope, Alabama. And if I remember correctly, the biggest difference is gonna be the roof. Um, on this coupe, we have our traditional metal roofing, which we really like a lot for when it comes to chickens because it helps keep the chickens cool. It looks really good. But other than that, it's gonna be almost a spot on match, but I am noticing there's a lot of details that makes this chicken coop very, very unique. So first things first, the run area is, looks to be, actually, let me measure it so I don't lie to you. I'm gonna guess eight foot, exactly. So the coupe run is eight foot wide, looks to be 18 foot long. And then on the back side is a hen house and a shed combo in one, just like our Craftsman coupe. One of the things I say all the time is our coupe is just a stage. And what you get to do is after we assemble the coupe or you assemble your own chicken coupe, you can come around and do all this beautiful coopscaping and do all these wonderful little details like she has done with the arbor. You can see all the beautiful plants and the trees. And the other thing too I can't wait to check out is the bird netting she's done in the back because she says she has an extremely high pressure of hawks here. So right away, right here, I see her rain barrel. This is a rain barrel that we like a lot because it is a food safe, high density polyethylene. It should last forever. It's a great place to hold a large amount of water. That way you're not having to worry about the water every single day with your chickens. It's summertime and I noticed she's got her pump running and that's probably just to make sure that water stays cool and doesn't get stagnant on her. So that's one of the nice things about our basic water system is that you have that option. The other thing I like a lot, and this is just such a nice touch, is you know we're in Western North Carolina. I don't think there's one level flat spot in this entire, entire part of the state. So it can get really cumbersome you know, building anything in here, even with the grade of the land coming off the chicken coop, you gotta make sure when you have your rain barrel sitting on the base that it's nice and level. And I love what she did. She framed this out. We got some nice detail here with the corner bracing with the metal and just put stone in here. And it just looks absolutely beautiful, putting the plants on each side. All right, so let's walk around this way. I wanna walk inside the run and take a look at, oh, actually you notice something right here. This is actually really cool. I love this because it just goes to show how easy it can be to make sure your chickens are happy. Now remember, trust me when I say this, heat is what stresses and kills chickens, not the cold. So many people, especially down here in the south, they become obsessed with keeping their chickens warm in the wintertime. It just doesn't get cold enough here. It's the heat and here is a great way to continue to help them to stay cool in the summertime. Look at that, would you look at that? Huh? So I have to believe, you know, on those real hot days, um, right now it's early, so we're looking at the, the sunrise over here, so um, we can block out those really warm mornings and as the sun comes up and over. And the other thing I noticed too, this is so smart. Um, she's got her dust bath right on the other side. And I've noticed a lot of chickens, when they take their dust bath in our more standard traditional coops, they do it right underneath the hen house. And I never really understood why, but I wonder if it's because it tends to be a little bit more shadier underneath the hen house. All right, so coming back around here. All right, so here we found the Dutch store, an absolute beautiful Dutch store. These things are great, one, because they look awesome, but they actually do serve a function. And actually right here is an example. There's gonna be many times that you're gonna to wanna to be able to either throw your table scraps in, or maybe your kids are out, your grandkids, whatever want to come over and you don't want them to go into the run, but you want to be able to open this up so the chickens don't come running out. But more importantly, he or she 
would have a hard time getting into the run real easily. So here's a great example of why it's so nice to have a Dutch door. But we're gonna go in there. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this. I love her carabiners that she's picked out. You know, you gotta remember these coops are on guard every single night protecting your chickens. And all the hardware locks that we use, like the gate latch and the barrel bolts, we love these because they're quick, simple, and easy. But a raccoon, for example, has pinkies and thumbs, and they potentially could climb up here and be smart enough to open this up. So an easy way to combat that is put a carabiner on there. They won't be able to open that up. So check this out. Again, every time I walk inside a run, I love how much headroom we have. So one of the nice things about the Craftsman Coop, if you will, which is really the, the, the DNA where this coop came from, is a lot of them you have the ability to have what we call the hen house doors and the deep litter door on the inside of the run. And the reason why that's nice is typically they're on the outside of the coop, like on a lot of our traditional coops. But a lot of times it just happens to be in the design and the flow of things, it's best to put it in the run. And when you do that, what's really nice is when it does come time to clean out your hen house, should you not want to wheelbarrow it out or whatever, you can just broadcast the deep litter into the run area and the chickens will absolutely love it. The other thing, check out this reclaimed barn wood. When we do reclaimed barn wood, it is authentic, 100, 200 year old reclaimed barn wood. And it's just such a beautiful look when you have that contrast of the old with the new. But other than that, everything else is just, just like all our other coops where you got the cantilever doors. Uh, so basically, it, this is two doors in one. We have a screen right here, so we have tons of ventilation. Um, over here, same thing. All right, and what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pull the dowels out. I wanna shut these doors just so I don't hit her siding when I go to open these up. All right, and I see she's got the little, little holding holes right there for the dowels. Yeah, that's sweet. Oh. So, all right, so let's open these up. Beautiful hen house doors. Oh, look at that. She's got like a, um, <laughs> this looks like a car wash curtain. Check this out. I'll see if I can show you guys. What a great idea. Again, chickens love this. They want a place to feel very safe. The last thing a chicken wants when they're laying an egg is a guy coming in with a tape measure, opening up the curtains, but we're gonna look at her. How beautiful is that, guys? That is absolutely awesome. So we'll take a look at her when we go to open up the egg hutch, but we're gonna leave her alone. I'm not gonna open up her deep litter door because it's already started. It'll just make a mess, but Trust me, this is the deep litter door. When it does come time to clean, you just drop down the door, pulling sweeping motion. Again, you can wheelbarrow it out, but I have to believe since she went with the idea of having the hen house doors inside the run area, you just pull it, dump it in the run area. It'll benefit the chickens greatly. Now, the other thing is, look at these beautiful rope wrap roost bars, and you can remove them very easily if you have to clean them, but you shouldn't have to. And tons of headroom inside here. So very important when it comes to the hen house area that the chickens are not in some little tiny pressure cooker, if you will, of a hen house. You want lots of room so that when it does warm up, which is gonna warm up, okay? Notice that we have a ridge cap where everything can exhaust out through the top and it just stays very cool and comfortable for the chickens. So check this out. Oh, and look it, I forgot. So the customer had these powder coated so they kind of blend it in with this clapboard siding. So we're just gonna open this up. <laughs> this is sweet. Look at that. I see exactly what's going on. So behind this wall, I'm gonna show you the pullout drawers. And this just became an available space, should you want it, to, you know, look at it. We're gonna put some shovels in there. She's got some, let's see, what's this? We got a, a rake. You know, look how easy that is. You can just put it right back in there. We've got some shelves on here to store your, your grit. Not sure what that is, but anyways, I mean, look how cool that is. Right here, quick and easy to get to, easily accessible. Very, very functional. I absolutely love it. All right, so let's close this up. 
Here's our standard ladder, just extra long because of the height of this coop. I love this. We got a piece of reclaimed wood here to act as the chicken door. Not necessary at all because this opening is completely protected by the run. But if you want the ability to close it, you can. And just like that, okay? The one time I have learned that it is nice to have this chicken door opening uh, with a door, should you, which we're going to be here in a little bit, opening up the back hen house doors and you don't want the chickens because they're really curious, they're going to come up, they're going, oh, what's going on? Let me out. Um, you can close this so that you can open up the back hen house doors and not worry about them getting out. Moving on down the line, love, love, love this system. This is what we call our feeder hopper. I'll show you on the inside of the hen house how it works, but out here for the chickens, we have these three feeder ports. They walk up to here, they stick their heads in there, and they eat. And what's nice about this is it actually does many things. One, it's good to let your chickens work. It's also good to make sure that the chickens aren't creating more waste than need be, so you reduce the drag back with the feeder ports. The other thing is, in theory, it also makes it that much more difficult should you have a high pressure, uh, let's say mice, trying to get into the feed in the feeder port. But more importantly, what the feeder hopper does is, depending on what size this one is on the inside, it'll hold roughly probably about 200 pounds of feed. So you just dump that in there and it's a set and forget it system. Check this out. Here's what happened here. We, she wanted one of our regular heated water systems where we have the rain barrel on the outside. Uh, we have 50 gallons of water that can't freeze because of the, the uh, the de-icer that is self-regulating, and then the water uh, feeds the pump. The pump pushes the water through and goes out the discharge hose back into the rain barrel. And in the summertime, you don't need the pump running. Gravity will push this water through the water bar. The chickens are going to hit the horizontal nipples here and drink. It is nice, though, if you want to make sure you really keep that water cool in the summertime to actually have the pump running. It keeps it from getting stagnant and it keeps it a lot cooler. Anyways, what happened was we had a very hard time finding the perfect spot to put her water bar because the one thing I say all the time, it's easy to design something functional. It's easy to design something beautiful. But to bring the two together is very challenging. And I love what the guys did here. What they ended up doing is putting the rain barrel on the outside of this wall here. Because if I remember correctly, she actually didn't want to see the rain barrel, which is one of the reasons why she has some plants out there. But we had this big six by six post right in the way of the water bar. And you know, there's many different things we could have done like bumping it out and put an extra board in. But the reason why we didn't want to do that is if we bump this water bar out, the chickens are gonna roost on it. So all they did is they made a custom water bar and put um, a couple 90s in to go around the six by six and boom, right back into the rain barrel. All right, the one thing I definitely wanted to show you guys, and we get asked this all the time, you know, what do I do to make sure my chickens have a dust bath? And the one thing I tell people is don't overthink it. All chickens need is an area that they can get to, a material that they can roll around and kick it up underneath their feathers like this material right here that has some mulch um, has some sand there might be some wood ash in there all this is doing is acting as a desiccant now what is critical is if you're not letting your chickens free range you got to remember everything that they need because this is their outdoors and one of them that gets overlooked is the dust bath and i love what the customer did here she just boxed the corner out with some four by fours and put some um, probably just regular construction sand, maybe play sand in here. Again, maybe mix some wood ash. Everyone's got their own opinion on the perfect recipe for a dust bath. But the point is, it's so important that they have this because this is the way the chickens can help groom themselves and actually keep those nasty um, exterior parasites off of them. I've never seen this before. This looks like just like a regular little plant hanger. Plant hanger. And it looks like we got some grit. Again, if the chickens are not free ranging, so important. A lot of people may not know this. Um, chickens don't have teeth. Their teeth technically are what we call grit, little tiny rocks that they'll find out in the wild and they'll actually swallow them and they'll use them inside their gizzard. And their gizzard is just a very tough muscle that's gonna use to crush up their food. So it's gonna go down into the crop, it's gonna ferment and down into the gizzard and they're gonna use this to chew it up. If they cannot free range and find these little tiny rocks, 
they're going to have a hard time digesting their food. So um, just make sure it's there. Chickens don't really care what it's in as long as they have access to it. But this is just such a cool looking grit holder hopper thing here. I just think it actually looks absolutely awesome. All right, so continuing to work our way around our chick coop, check this out. This is one of the best parts about a chick coop. It's the egg hutch. And just above the egg hutch, we have a window that again is completely functional. You have the half inch hardware cloth protected behind it. Again, it's so important. You want as much ventilation as you can inside your hen house. And of course you want to be able to get to your eggs. And here we bumped out the egg hutch. We have a reclaimed door for the egg hutch door. Uh, carabiner, very, very smart. Because again, we love our gate latches because they're easy. They can be used with one hand, but you want to make sure you know, raccoons can climb up onto the egg hutch and climb down from the roof onto the egg hutch and try to open these. So we're gonna open this up. We were looking at this girl earlier and I have a feeling, or I had a feeling that she might've been broody. So most likely she's got eggs underneath her and she just, yep, she got me. She wants to be a mother. So we're gonna leave her alone, but check this out. So easy to get to the eggs. I'm not sure exactly what this nesting material is. This looks like Aspen but that's what you want. You want material that just mimics what chickens would do in nature. And that is long stringy material, all right? But the point is what's really nice about the drop down door, I've said it a million times, I'm gonna say it again. We're not spooking and stressing out the chicken right now. Uh, maybe a little when I was going underneath here for getting the eggs, but no big deal. Drop down door makes it so it's not stressful for your chickens. So another detail I want to show you guys that I think is really, really smart. We have this little nook area where the run area protrudes out and we got the back sidewall of the uh, hen house and the egg hutch right here. This is going to be a high traffic area. And what she did is she brought in a stone base so that it won't get muddy. She doesn't have to keep coming in and weed whacking it and make it dirty. I just thought, again, just such a great little detail for many reasons. And right here, she's got a rug. So, you know, you can wipe your feet before you go in, especially when you got a beautiful floor like she does on the inside. And just some patio blocks, look like 12 by 12 uh, patio blocks right there. So easy and just makes a great base for the rug. Super smart and then corner it off with some plants. Now, the other thing that I absolutely love, now we didn't do this, the customer added this later and I really love it. This is such a nice detail. We just have this overhang uh, which is really nice, say you're coming out here on one of those really rainy days and for whatever reason, you can't get right into the door right away or maybe you're collecting, oh, speaking of collecting eggs, look, at she's got a little egg basket here with some eggs in here. I'm not sure if this is for fully functional purpose or if it's more for decoration, but that is absolutely beautiful. But anyways, it's just, it's really nice to have this extra protection, whether it's from the shade or the rain when you're in front of a door. The other thing actually I wanted to mention real quick too is she's done such a good job with a lot of the um, aesthetics with picking out the hardware and also the beautiful metal work that not only do we see on this door, if we can go back out a little bit and get a shot up, we have a custom made weather vane up top. A local fabricator, a local metal designer, a metal sculptor, you can always find him at charlescalvindesign.com. Check out his website or give him a call. Let's go ahead and do this again. I have not been in there yet. This is one of my other favorite parts. All right, so check this out. This is absolutely beautiful. We are inside the shed area. Right here, you can see the back side of the hen house. Here's these hen house doors framed out in the Douglas fir and then trimmed out in that reclaimed barn wood. Just again, I love the contrast between the old and the new. And what this does, just like all our other Craftsman Coops, we can open this up for whatever reason, you have access to the back side of the hen house. I can tell you, People have said, Matt, this is great for when it's raining, it's storming, and it might be cold out, whatever. They don't have to be outside of the chicken coop. They can come right inside the shed area and again, get access to the back side of the hen house. All right, now one of the things that people love about the Craftsman style chicken coop is this right here. We can pull these drawers out and, I mean, technically they're not drawers, they're cards. They can hold up to 500 pounds and just have the ability to store, you know, whether it's your industrial hemp or whatever it is that you want to store on these carts. We're taking advantage of that dead space underneath. And I love what the guys did here. 
they continued the clapboard siding inside, even on the drawers. We can pull these out. Oh yeah, lots of storage, real easy to open and close them, and they look really, really nice. So here we are on the back side of the feeder hopper, and uh, I was just chuckling because it's just, again, so beautiful. Function and beauty in one. So what we do is we just make custom cabinetry along with the chicken coop. Moving down below, here is the feeder hopper, and it's real simple. You open up the top, you take your bag of chicken feed, and it's usually you know a 40, 50 pound bag. And what's nice about our feeder hopper is you can just take that bag, open it up, pick it up, set it on this shelf, and then just dump it. It doesn't get any easier than that. And this feeder hopper will hold about 200 pounds of feed, which is really, really nice. Cause that means you're it's just one less thing you got to do on a regular basis. All right, what I want to show you guys now is the big aviary on the other side of this chicken coop. So what I wanted to show you guys is what she's done here is just absolutely brilliant. She's got other, areas like the smaller chicken coop here. Uh, we did not build this just as a quick disclaimer, but it's a great little chicken coop. And she says she uses that for her brooder, for her baby chicks, or maybe she's got a quarantine. And then over there, it almost looks like she's got a little greenhouse, but she's got a garden area. And what she's done is she set it up just right so that she has quick, easy control of whether or not to let the chickens out of the coop or into the aviary, but more importantly, when you are in your growing season with your vegetables inside your garden, that is when you do not want your chickens in there. They're just going to eat it up, tear it up. But in the off season, when you're not growing, that is the best time to let your chickens go in there. We're going to go check out the aviary. And again, all an aviary is, is a place for the chickens to have a much larger area that is protected from your daytime predators. And in order for them to get out, it starts by getting out of the run. And here we have a door that we, we don't sell it, but we have purchased them when a customer requests them. They're not horrible in any means. This is the omelet door. And what you can see that's very unique about this door is it slides back and forth. It's not a guillotine style or a swing out door fits perfectly in there and just gives the chickens quick easy access out to the run area and then as we walk out this way this is so great this is three quarter by three quarter and this looks like the black heavy duty netting just like what i used to install all the time to keep pest birds out and i love that uh, we'll say i don't know almost six foot from the ground up the two inch by three inch fencing material. And this is kind of the secret right here, guys. These are hog rings. And this is the best, quickest way to attach netting to a hard perimeter, whether it's the fencing or, yeah, right here, there it is. So it's done so well, there's your wire. That is what's so important. A lot of people don't realize when they're doing their netting, you got to have something for the net to attach to. And the quickest, easiest way to do that is with a galvanized or a stainless steel, typically an eighth inch, what we call wire rope, which is just a steel cable that goes all the way around. You got to make it nice and tight. And most likely she's going to have a turnbuckle somewhere. That's the other secret to get it really nice and tight. You put a turnbuckle on it. And again, just keep attaching your bird netting to it. It works beautifully to keep those hawks away from your chickens during the daytime. Um, right here, she's got another door. So different way of coming in, really accessible, so functional, got that beautiful arbor. I was just gonna say, I wouldn't be surprised she's gonna start growing something that's gonna grow up and around that arbor. And then just transitioning down this walkway. So simple, yeah, she's got the pressure tree to post in. She was able to catch that wire, something to attach your fencing material to. And just continue on right down the line, another door. Aha, I see what's going on here. So she's got a very large door and this is gonna be so that she can come in here uh, probably with like a wheelbarrow, uh, should she ever have to. Hence the reason why this door, I'm gonna say it's probably about a four foot wide opening. Five foot, almost a five foot wide opening. So real easy to get in and out with a wheelbarrow or maybe a small tractor, I'm not exactly sure. The other thing too that is really nice about what she's done is she kept it up high enough that, you know, it's high enough for me to walk through. It's starting to get a little bit shorter, but you can see how easy it is. It's almost like a, a circus tent where you can have a post that goes up. You can have a post that goes up as high as you want, really. And you can attach cables to it for the netting to sit on, again, just like a circus tent. So we'll just take a quick look over here. 
at her other coupe. Again, this is where, yeah, you can definitely see she's got some younger hands and she's, she's making sure her automatic door here doesn't open so that the, the younger hands don't get beat up by the older hands. But this is a great way where the older hands can come see them, talk to them through the fence. And hopefully the idea is that they get to know each other. And then once those girls are the same size, that is a good time to let them out and start really having some sort of, sort of engagement with the older chickens from the existing flock. Oh, check this out. So she's got what we call a sprout box. Yes, this is fantastic. Chickens love greens. And what can happen is if you try to plant greens, the chickens are just gonna eat it up and it can't regrow. Well, a way to combat that is you have what's called a sprout box where you just have a box, you fill it up with soil, you put some seed in there to grow whatever it is you wanna grow, and you put the hardware cloth over top. What will happen is the greens will grow through it so the chickens can eat it, but they can't scratch at it. Therefore, it'll continue to um, regenerate itself for your chickens. Here's her door so that when she wants, you know, definitely during the non-growing season, she can let her chickens go right into the garden. There we go. Just that simple. So the chickens can have access to her garden when she wants them to. So smart, super, super easy. So here's exactly what I was talking about. Here we have this beautiful, gosh, I'm not exactly sure what type of tree. Uh, actually, it looks like a poplar tree, but either way, um, what she's done is attached the cable coming up to an eye bolt and right there's that turnbuckle. All right, you twist it and it'll tighten the cable. And what that allows her to do is attach the netting with the hog rings and, and help raise the canopy so it's not too short when you're walking inside here and you're not hitting your head. I absolutely love it.